Hey everybody, Stephanie here. It's Friday and I am gonna do my nails. I've been trying to do them all week, but uh, the week has just gotten crazy with a bunch of um, stuff left and right that needed to be done. So I didn't have 30 minutes to stop and do my nails yet. So at any rate, I'm going to flip the phone around so you can watch. Um, this video will probably end up being a little long, so you can just use the scroll bar on the bottom to advance, go back and forth, and watch what you would like, and replay anything that you missed. And of course, anytime you want to reach out to me and ask any questions, I am available to help. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna turn the phone around. Um, which I have in my cabinet. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna and then I'm gonna lay it down so it's face down, so you can see everything that I'm doing. Get it all situated here. High tech stuff. <laughs> so, all right. So I wanted to show you really quick. I used the uh, Color Straight nail polish remover to take off all of my nails, and then when I got finished with that. I washed my hands and then I applied this OPI exfoliating um, cuticle cream. And then after that, I pushed my cuticles down with this wooden um, orange stick, just a little miniature one. They come in uh, different sizes. Anything plastic or wooden is best to use. If you use something that's metal, um, it's gonna damage and scrape off your natural nail. So that's why I try and stick to uh, the wood. I actually like the wood better than the plastic. I can get, um, it's a little um, thinner, I guess, if you will, than the plastic is, so I feel like I get better results, but you may prefer something different. <clears throat> and then I used this little buffer block just on the tops of my nails, especially if I'm going to shape my nails. Um, I like to um, very, very, I mean, I'm just like barely touching, but very lightly um, buff my nails to get off any ridges. I actually feel the tops of my nails because if you do file your nails, you're actually tearing your natural nails. So if you come back around with this, and I like to use this after I wash and then I wash again, um, looking for any of those little skirts that hang off of your fingertips. But I get rid of those and I just kind of reseal the cuticle um, or the nail tip so there's no rough edges, which makes for healthier nails and makes for uh, less peeling. Okay, um, I forgot to say that I also used this uh, sugar scrub. I don't even know which way is the right direction because everything's upside down to me right now. But I use this sugar scrub. It also, I think, helps my nails, cleans them, um, gets rid of any dead skin that this was intended to help with, um, and just makes my hands smoother. So, uh, and my last step before I put on a new set of Color Street is I like to apply a base coat. So um, until Color Street comes out with our own collection which is going to be very soon, so stay tuned. But I use this OPI Nail Envy, and you can see I have a bit of a shine on my nails. So I put two coats of that on, just because my nails are dry and brittle, and it helps the uh, lasting duration of the Color Street nail strips. It helps nurture my nails, and I feel that this Color Street nail polish remover is less harsh on my uh, nails than the previous remover that I was using. My nails were peeling because of it and they're actually growing out and getting healthier. So let's begin. <clears throat> I'm going to be wearing this little retired unicorn set. It's not really a, called a unicorn but it is called Pacific Waters. And I decided to wear this because I'm going to be putting a surprise accent on my ring finger. And this it's a surprise because anyone who has 
already donated to my March of Dimes fundraiser is getting uh, one of the surprises that I'm also going to be wearing. I'm going to put it on so I'm representing uh, the way I need to be representing next Saturday when I do the March of Dimes walk or when I volunteer there uh, in Dallas next Saturday. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna open the package. We're like doing brand new, start from scratch. There's, I haven't done a video in a long time. So I want to kind of do the full shebang so everybody can see whatever parts of it they need to see. This is what comes in a package, all right? Every single package has the nail prep pad that is just simply an alcohol swab. It's to clean your fingertips, uh, or I mean your fingernails. If you don't have access to soap and water, then you can use that. I don't use this because it dries out my nails, so I use good old soap and water, all right? So I save this for the events that I do when I put samples on customers that are just walking by. Uh, it also includes one of these little nail files. Uh, they all look different. On one side they have a cute little design. Some people collect these. Um, by all means, um, I hold on to mine. Um, they do last for a while. I like to keep one in my car. So if I'm sitting at a stoplight and I'm feeling my nails and I feel a little rough, Part, I can just again just very lightly touch it and get rid of that rough part so my nails stay looking nice longer All right so I'm gonna put that oh I think I'm actually gonna use this one so I'm gonna take the they come up with a little protective class plastic cover so as not to get rid of the grit all right so I'm gonna put that aside and then of course the beautiful nail strips they're glued on and it's just a uh, <laughs> It's a nuisance to me to have that glue on there, so sorry you have to see me and watch me do this. And I'm taking up precious video time to remove the glue, <laughs> but I can't cope and move on unless I do that. <laughs> All right, so um, I do have my contact information on the back of all the packages. So if you don't already have it saved, that or if you're not already a member of my VIP group on Facebook, keep this put it on your fridge uh, keep it wherever you keep your nail file or your nail products so you can reach out to me in case you need me all right so the package just tells you basically what's inside it gives you some quick instructions on how to apply um, all that good stuff and then if you want to hold on to the package some people do the name of the product is down here and these numbers are the item number for inventory and then the lot number, which tells Color Street Corporate uh, the date that it was made and the bundle that it was made with. So if something was wrong with this package, uh, they can make a note of it. So if they continue to get repeated reported issues about something that came from the same lot, they can make adjustments and take care of things. All right. Okay, so here is the set and on the back of the plastic sleeve is the name of what you're about to put on. So um, I always put my leftovers back in the sleeve. You may um, opt to open it from this end where the pinky strip starts. So you always have the name of the strip available. I'm not gonna worry about that. <clears throat> so there's a little notch in the plastic so you don't need any scissors. Um, speaking of scissors, I have some here. I'm going to use them. Um, and the reason why they do that is because um, the idea of using our nail strips is everything you need to put them on is in this little package. So you can take them in the car, on the road with you, or on the plane, and you just need this, nothing else. All right, so I am um, going to go ahead and separate some of these because... I um, want to get the most uh, value out of this video as possible. And I uh, know it's already taken a long time to get to where we're at so far time-wise, and I don't wanna take up any more of your precious time or bore you to tears. 
So, all right. So I'm going to show you um, the method that I personally use when I apply my nail strips. I'm not going to show you multiple methods. I'm going to show you what I do now. I have had tried and true um, practice rounds and I've tried this method, that method, and this is the method that works best for me and I am happiest with these results and I don't get the little peekaboo at the tip of my nail because of this. So um, every strip has a little plastic cover. Take that off. Pull the strip from the silver tab. I always pull that off. Um, no matter uh, what side I'm using, I'm gonna flip this over because it's stuck on my finger. Um, by the way, the temperature in my apartment is slightly warm and uh, that is the best condition to do your nails. Don't stand by a vent, don't have a fan going, don't make it too cold. Um, the nail strips are pliable, uh, but the colder it is, um, the stiffer they become and then they become difficult to apply. So I always start with putting the pinky on my left hand and I put it on back onto the paper I make a T so I don't touch the sticky part and I can control the nail strip better. I probably did that a little too fast. And then I basically just center it. And when if I'm not happy with, it, with its placement, I can pick it up and move it. My nails are a little sticky from the uh, base coat that I put on because I did it not too long ago. Normally I wait about 24 hours before I do my nails, but I'm kind of in a hurry today. So once I'm happy with the placement, I'm going to pull the paper off. I'm still going to stick it down, sticky or uh, shiny side up, and then I'm just going to push from the bottom up. I do pull the nail strip tight because it gets out any wrinkles and bubbles and all that stuff. So it makes it more of a secure connection. All right. And you see how that is. And I have all of this excess. So if I want to get a lot of use out of this one package. I turn my hand over and I cut the nail strip and I turn my hand over so I can see where my fingernail is because I don't want to cut that off. I've done that before <laughs> and I wasn't happy with myself. Okay, so I push that into place. I don't know if you saw me fold it over. I'm pushing it into place and then if I decide that I want to use the paper again, remember shiny side. Do not stick uh, the nail strip on to the matte side because you'll never get it off and then you'll have to throw it away. All right, so I'm gonna take the remainder, the other half of that strip, and I'm gonna just shift it to the left just a little bit. And that's because I'm going to have a little peekaboo, I don't know if you can see it, right there, of my nail. and. Um, if I put it closer to the inside of my nail, then I can't see the peekaboo too much and it won't drive me crazy. If somebody is looking at my nails from this direction, they won't be able to see the peekaboo at all. So I don't worry about that anymore. I used to at first, but I don't care anymore. So, all right, so here I go. I have that excess. I guess if you were going to do a pedicure, you could cut that little piece off and stick it on your little toe or something but I am done with this one strip, folding it over, tapping it into place. I like to rub it on the top of my nail to secure it. Okay, there we go. So I got two nails out of one strip. I'm moving on to the next nail. I'm gonna leave that extra part right there for a little, for just a few minutes. I'm gonna skip my ring finger because that's where I'm doing the accent nail. So my middle finger is coming next. So again, I'm going to pull off the plastic, the clear plastic. I'm going to pull up from the silver tab. Some of the older sets I think have a like a rose gold colored tab. And this is just like a sticker. So you can put it on fabric and it will come off. So that's another beautiful benefit of using Color Street. So if you accidentally get um, a piece of this stuck on fabric, your couch, it falls on the floor, it comes right up. Um, unlike regular nail polish in the bottle, 
um, you either ruined something or um, you're going to ruin it when you try and get it up. All right, so um, again, I probably talked through turning it sideways <laughs> onto the paper, so I'll try and remember to do it right on the next one. So I'm gonna stick it on my middle finger right above the cuticle. Don't put it on the cuticle if, is, if you can prevent it. Sometimes it's hard to really tell where that cuticle is. And then I'm just gonna push it into place and push it up. And then I'm gonna turn my hand over. My nail is short enough to where I can get a second nail out of this. So again, I'm gonna cut it just above where my nail is. And I do my left hand first because all scissors are for right-handed people. And then I'm gonna fold the top over and you saw that there was just barely anything to fold over the top, but it's still covering the tip of my nail. So I'm just gonna let it sit there and cure for a few minutes while I finish doing the rest of my nails. All right, so I'm gonna stick that little piece back onto the shiny side of the paper and I'm gonna scooch it over. I have a funky uh, nail on this middle finger, so I'm gonna I, I like to put it over as far as possible to the left um, so I can cover up that little funky piece of that nail. Sometimes it likes to peel and that's been happening my whole life. So um, if I can get it over and cover that, um, then I will be happier with the results in the long run. All right, so I just fold it over the top and you can see how short my nail is. I hear so many people say, I don't like to wear nail polish, my nails are too short. Well, look how short that nail is on me. I mean, come on, it still looks beautiful, okay? And I know I have some excess on each side. I have some excess in the middle as well. We're gonna take care of that in a minute. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do the pointer I'll talk you through the whole process. I'm going to peel off the clear cover. I'm going to peel from the silver tab. I'm going to just immediately turn it sideways and lay it across to make a T. I'm going to pull off the tab and I'm ready to go. All right. So now I'm gonna stick that on my middle finger, just center it as best as possible, right above the cuticle. Don't push it down too much until you're happy with its placement. I'm gonna take the paper off. I'm just gonna put it there for a second. And you see it looks all kind of crazy, but if I tug it just ever so slightly, I don't like to stretch them too much, um, but I tug it ever so slightly to get the wrinkles out. And I'm gonna have to lean down because this is killing my back. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I rub it into place and then I'm gonna turn it over and cut just above my fingernail. I don't know if you can see my fingernail, but you can understand why I turn it over so I can see better where I'm cutting. And then I just pinch and fold over. And I do like, uh, I pinch the sides like this as I'm pushing down and then do the top. And I find that when I do that, then I don't get like a wrinkle on the top. If I do get a wrinkle, um, usually what I do is take a piece of fabric and rub it out while it's still fresh. Uh, I've also heard that you can run it under warm water um, to kind of make it a little bit more pliable. So I would do that and then maybe rub it with a piece of fabric. I don't want to rub it with this because it's a harsh object and I might tear it. Okay, if you have any questions about all of that, you can ask me. And I'm going to stick it back onto the shiny side of the paper. And I'm going to put it on just above the cuticle. Push it into place and push it up. Some people like to cut them in half before they put them on. But, uh, and I've tried that before, and um, it works just fine, but I can go faster if I just cut it when I put it on. All right, fold it over, push down on the top, and I'm good to go. All right, there we go. I've gotten um, 
six fingers done and I've only used three nail strips and I don't even know how long it's been um, time wise so um, I actually like to stop right here before I do my thumbs um, because I might need to use my thumbs as a tool and I don't want to mess up um, the application on my thumbs so I'm going to come back to where I first started my pinky and I'm not quite sure how um, clear the picture is but there is a little piece right there that's a little wider than my pinky nail so I'm taking the pointed end of this orange stick and you can get these at Sally's they're really cheap you can get them from Amazon um, I have them all over the place but I'm pushing it down just to get it into the crevices I don't know that there's really gonna there's really not much to trim I've turned it around to the beveled side if you can see and I'd flip it from pushing the flat side towards my finger or pushing the round side towards my finger I think it's just a preference choice at that point but I don't know if you can see that super tiny little piece of purple right there but sometimes if you don't peel off that little tiny extra piece it makes all the world of difference as to um, the security of your nail strip sometimes water or lotion can get up under it and it can make your nail strip come off so um, you might want to be picky about that. Sometimes you need to turn the flashlight on your cell phone so you can see it better. Okay, so I'm going to lean over again <coughs> because my back hurts. Um, so now the way that I remove um, the excess that's still on my pinky, I used to either take my thumb and push it off. I used to take the beveled edge of this and push it off or tuck it under. Um, some people like to tuck it under and just let it cure just a little bit longer. I have discovered that if I just take this uh, that came in the package, remember that, and if I just ever so lightly, you can hear me, ever so lightly, it might look like I'm doing more than just lightly. And I'm just going straight down a little bit at an angle down at an angle trying to get rid of that excess i go at the angle so i don't get the top part of the nail where my fingertip where my fingernail tip is and then i come in underneath and peel off the excess and there should be enough of a perforation to where it comes off easily like that okay and there we go and if there as it cures a little bit longer if there's any rough edges or whatever, then come back through and fix it. But I'm happy with where it's at now. Um, as it, as the out, as the next hour goes on, I will be touching it to see if I, am I getting any rough edges or whatever. And if so, then I will file it a little bit more. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna move on to the middle finger and then I'll start on the other hand. So I'm pushing down into the crevices just to make sure it is covering all of my nail as much as possible and getting down closer to the cuticle and then I will, I'm just, I'm, I don't know if you can see me, I'm kind of turning the point like this and sometimes when you have just the finest little bit to trim, if you turn the point like that, it helps get a neater trim and you're not tearing off part of the nail strip that you didn't intend to and then ever so gently I'm just pulling the nail strip away because I can see the perforation see if you can see that all right and then off it comes um, depending on how warm you have it in your place wherever you're applying the nails um, depends on how easily some of those uh, little pieces come off so um, it's getting quite warm in here now another trick that I have down by my cuticles is that if it's um, sitting on top of my cuticle just ever so slightly I will take my thumbnail and this is why I didn't do my thumbnails yet and I'll uh, push down trying to create a perforation around my cuticle just to get that tiny little piece off 
and sometimes you might have to encourage it a little bit with the beveled side of the stick. I'm going to lean over <clears throat> and get it off. And I don't know if you guys can see it. It's just so minute. But again, that tiny little piece, I'm not even really pushing. I'm just kind of uh, running it along the edge of my cuticle. It Again, the nail strip is pretty pliable right now, so easy to tear. So I'm just making sure that perforation I created with my fingernail actually went all the way through. I flipped it over to the pointed side of the stick to get a more fine um, drag, I guess you could say, away from my cuticle. And then I can see where it's coming off. And I guess actually, since I've created that perforation, if I just wanted to leave that little piece there until it dr uh, really dried out, I, it would probably just fall off because uh, our product doesn't stick to skin. So it might come off a little more easily if I just let it sit there. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> and obviously I need some moisturizer <laughs> on my uh, hands. All right, so here we go to remove this excess piece. Again, I'm just going straight down. You can hear the noise from the file. I'm applying a little bit of um, resistance, but not much because I'm not trying to change the shape of my nail. I'm just trying to get that perforation. And then I come in with this orange stick to help lift it off. All right, there we go. And then feel for any rough spots. They may come through again after these have time to finish curing. <clears throat> All right, so here we go with the pointer, pushing down into the crevices to make sure my nail is completely covered and that they are completely secure and in place and rolling it back and forth like so creating that perforation not quite sure if you guys can see it when it's happening but I see it I'm still gonna flip it over to the beveled side just to I'm just pushing um, I try not to drag it I've done that in the past and if you have the perforation all the way through it's fine but if you don't you're going to tear the side of the nail strip and then um, you'll be aggravated <laughs> like me. Um, okay, so I'm going to get just that little piece right there because I don't want to tear it off of my nail. Okay, so again with creating that perforation with this nail file, and I think it's the same grit on both sides. Okay. And you can, um, after you do this um, a couple of times, you can tell when it actually um, creates the perforation and it's safe for you to start peeling it away. But I like that, and if it still gets hung up, just go back and do it again. There's that little piece right there that I was trying to get off earlier. Okay, there we go. Don't, the, the idea of me doing all of that is so I do not tug on the nail strip so I don't get um, the shrinkage and the peekaboo of my fingernail tip. So there we go. All right, done with those three. I don't have any sides to trim in this one because I've got uh, a narrow, like a strip that's too narrow for my pinky. And remember, I decided to get over it. So all I have to do is just file off the excess. And again, I'm just going at an angle to get that off. Sometimes if it's a um, in the corners, just very lightly get the corners, but don't go back and forth like this. It is not good for the nail strip. It will tear it and it's not good for your fingernail, okay? And then there's a tiny little piece right there hanging off and got that.
Oop, still stuck on my finger. Okay, now let's do the middle finger. And if you're still hanging on with me, watching me through this whole thing, then good for you. <laughs> I probably would have fast forwarded, reversed, ended. Okay, that's enough. I've seen the demonstration. I know what to do. But if you're still hanging on with me, good job. You must be totally bored. So I'm taking this pointed end and I'm just very lightly um, helping to create that perforation. So I put it here and I twisted, right, to get it started, to get it pushed into place, and then I drug it, okay, just to make sure. Um, just be careful when you drag so you don't um, tear your strip. And I'm gonna push that into place. There's a little excess there. All right, so let's get this off here. <clears throat> Sometimes you gotta, it's almost like you are trying to curl your hair in the mirror for the first time. You gotta go through several different, different angles before you figure out um, which works best for you before you can start really getting to those fine details and some people are blessed to have nail beds where our nail strips fit perfectly and they don't have to do any of this trimming which um, I'm very envious of but this is actually something I normally do at night just before I go to bed I have the news on so um, it's quiet and by the time the news is over I'm done with my nails and it's time for bed and because they are dry polish, I can wake up in the morning and I will not have any hair prints or sheet prints. All right, so there's that tiny little piece there to get. And um, now I'm gonna get the top. And I will say, the one thing about having short nails is using this method, it is kind of hard to get the file um, to perforate the top of the nail. So you may have to use the uh, thumbnail method, you know, to poke underneath and trim it like that, or this method to poke underneath and trim it if your nail is too short, okay? And I'm just gonna pull it off like that. I'm trying really hard not to use my fingertips or my fingernails from my other fingers that already have nail strips on them. Okay, there we go. And there's a little cleanup down there, but I'll save that for later. All right, and Here's my pointer, and I did get it on my cuticle there too, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. See how I'm just, I'm not even moving my thumb, I'm just kind of rocking my finger back and forth and using my thumbnail to create a perforation because I'm trying not to tear the nail strip. Now I moved it over just a tiny bit, I lifted and moved it over, I'm trying to get that perforation. I'm pushing down um, pretty good with my thumb. I don't know if you can see that little perforation that I made there. Should probably do that on that finger too while I'm at it. Just get it so very close to your cuticle. Um, you don't want to take off too much uh, to create a, too much of a gap. Okay, there we go. And then back to the pointer and turning the point pushing it into place and see how I have my hands if I had if I'm resting my pointer on my other hand I've actually steadied myself um, you can totally like this is my uh, food processor right here if I need to steady myself on something um, because I can't keep my hands from shaking then I can do that 
or just do it down here. I have to get closer to my eyes <laughs> so I can see. Um, <clears throat> all right, and then um, what I'm gonna do before I start to pull that off is I'm gonna come around and do this part too. And sometimes I move the nail and uh, I'm actually moving my finger on this. I'm very right-handed and so sometimes when I have to use my left hand to do dominant things, it doesn't turn out so well. So, all right, so now I'm gonna pick up, pick up from the outside going in because I've got all of this stuff here and maybe I'll be lucky, like I am, to where it'll start picking up some of that. There's a tiny little piece there, okay? All right, and then just get that excess there, like that. And, you know, I can do this a lot faster when I'm not on video because I'm sitting down, I have a bright light, and I'm not talking through everything that I'm doing, and I'm not trying to be a perfectionist, so I can demonstrate best practices so don't let this deter you from how long it's gonna take you to do it. And it'll take you longer the first time because you're new. Once you get the hang of it, you'll develop your own routine, what works best for you, and um, it really should only take about 30 minutes at the most to do a full set of nails. Okay, there we go. And get this finger while I'm at it and like I said before you know I already created the perforation so if I really wanted to I could just leave it there and then it would come off um, easily because see how that's perforated separated um, it's really stuck on my skin uh oh see <laughs> I'm actually getting a piece of my skin too ew that's kind of gross get off camera for just a second pull that off don't want you to have to see that and there's still a little piece right there see that right there get my nail my thumbnail involved to get that off nope Start to become a nuisance sorry for this taking so long like I said it's getting pretty warm in here okay there we go so I'll fix up that cuticle before I finish. All right, so <clears throat> home run, um, rounding for the home plate here. Uh, there, are, These two, um, I use both sizes for my thumb. Um, I do hold on to the big one um, and use it later. All right, so I just separated, pull off the plastic cover. Um, be careful, because you have your nails done. I haven't done my ring finger yet, so I'm going to use that to help start the peel. Okay, Turn it sideways and stick it back on the paper. Pull off that tab. I'm not really going to worry about that little extra part right there because I cannot use the thumb ones on two thumbs. Um, it just does not work for me. Um, actually, I am going to pull it off because I like to use that side. I feel like it's just a little wider on that side. On this one ever so slightly tapered okay sorry leaning in and I'm um, gonna stick it just above the cuticle I really don't want to trim any more cuticles <laughs> um, all right looks perfect to me take off the paper and there's a wrinkle there so just um, pull it ever so slightly tight and I'm not pushing down very hard as I'm rubbing it up to push it into place. Uh, I feel like if you rub too hard and not gently, then it'll be more difficult for you to get the wrinkle out, okay? And then I'm gonna pinch and fold and um, push over like that to keep wrinkles from getting on the very tip of my fingernail. All right, rub it into place. And I'm gonna go ahead and just push this into place for um, to get it secured better on my thumb and it's so pliable that I'm just barely touching it and it's already trimming it so that's good 
All right, and again, I like to use the pointed side of the wooden stick because I can get a more precise trim. And I am, I don't know if you can see my thumb moving, I'm just barely turning it. That'll take some practice. And I'm holding my hand in my hand to steady myself. And I'm just coming back through to make sure that the perforation went all the way through. I'm gonna pull that up along the side, okay? And then I'm gonna take this and trim off the excess, make sure my camera is still catching everything. Trim off the excess and I'm just going down at an angle. I'm not quite sure if you can see that, like the angle that I'm talking about, but getting the edges, all right? And then come through with my orange stick, very gently, carefully pulling off the excess. Ta-da! I just think that's the coolest thing. All right, last one that I'm gonna do on camera um, is my other thumb. Now, one thing I wanna say about these ombre shades is you can turn it around and put the dark side at the top and have it as a reverse ombre. You can do it sideways. And if your nail is thin enough, I guess um, this would just be green and purple. <clears throat> but you can angle it. Um, you know, you can scoot it down. Like I said, it doesn't stick to skin. So you can totally lay it and put it on yourself just like that. See how much excess is down there? And then just trim it at your cuticle. It won't stick and it's easy to clean up. Get creative. All right, so pulling that off, getting the silver tab, pulling that off, and I'm gonna remove that because, like I said, I think this smaller thumb one is tapered just slightly. So I'm gonna use that end on my thumb, and I'm gonna bend down to get a little closer and get it right above my cuticle so I don't have to trim. All right, looks perfect. Lift that off, tug gently, and start rubbing gently up the sides, and then pinch and fold over. Okay, and I guess if you wanted to do your thumbs and use that excess on your toes, you could do that too. You could cut that and then use it on your toes. I'm not doing my toes today. All right, then I'm gonna trim, and I'm gonna keep this on camera because somebody may have advanced all the way to this part. And I'm just gonna push and turn with the point of the stick. Push and turn, creating that perforation. I can see it happening. And then do the other side before I flip over to the beveled edge. Push it into place. All right, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna have the flat side facing me just so I can see it better. And then push that down as well. Get that little cut perforation in the nail strip. Again, be very careful so you don't tear it or tug it too much. And then on this one, I'm going to trim the top of it before I start pulling some of it off. It just is a personal preference. You can pull it off first if you want to. I just like my results better if I get the top off first. There's so much of it there that sometimes it's easier to, for me to take that part off first. Okay. Here we go. Um, whoops, I want to use the beveled side and I'm gonna pull all of that off. Does not look like a hot mess, but ta-da! It is not. It's a beautiful manicure. All right, pulling off those little pieces. There. Like I said, if you create that perforation and you wanna just leave it there, 
overnight and take it off in the morning, it should come off way easier. Um, if you know me, you know I like to make life difficult sometimes. <laughs> so that's why I'm taking it off. But uh, anyway, I might try that next time. Let you know how it works. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, I did um, eight nails using one, two, three, four, five strips. All right, I have all these left over. So what I do is I, um, if they're not already torn down into twos, I tear them down into twos. The single ones are fine as well. I stick them back into the plastic sleeve like that. And remember, there's the name of the product there. Bear with me for just a second. Okay, I'm back. Tulip is here with me. She says hi. <laughs> and look, they're dry, so I can pet the kitty cat. All right, <clears throat> anyway, so ideally, this would have been plugged in. And um, this is my little miniature bag sealer. So once it gets hot, I'm going to seal my bag shut. And it's going to. Um, heat seal it so it keeps the air out and then I'm going to stick it into a Ziploc bag a zip top bag and then I'm going to stick it in the freezer I'm going to take my phone again all right so I'm going to stick it in my freezer <clears throat> because there's actually where I keep all of my nail strips right here um, and I don't know if you can tell, oops, sorry, but there is moisture in your freezer. So, um, even though I heat sealed it shut to keep the air out and, um, it should be fine the way it is. Um, I don't like to pitch it in a drawer. I like to stick it in the freezer and these leftovers, I mean, I could use them a year from now. I could use them a year and a half from now. And they're going to go on just as perfectly as they went on today because I saved them um, by sealing the package. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, thank you so much. If you are hanging in with me to the very end of this video, um, I just looked up at the time and it's 47 minutes long, but I've been talking um, the whole time. So uh, if you have any questions, Please ask. Um, anything is worth asking because um, I want to help you get the most out of your Color Street nail strips, okay? And stay tuned for that surprise accent nail. All right. Have a good night. See you later. Bye.